my name is Paul Probst, the inventor of the, the blind sight devices for horses and, uh, and dogs. And uh, this particular video is uh, about qualifying your dog's hearing for using the blind sight unit. So this applies to both the large and small unit for, uh, for dogs, which is to say the blind sight, blind sight S. Um, theoretically, you could use any old dog whistle to um, check your dog's hearing. We prefer this one. It's available everywhere. It's ubiquitous. You can get this on Amazon, um, eBay, pretty much anywhere. Uh, lots of shops, hardware stores, whatever. It's a Remington R1574. I'll say that again. It's a Remington model R1574. Um, it's a common design of dog whistle, uh, but this one's pretty consistent. You get this anywhere, they're going to be pretty much the same. Now, there is a veterinary test for uh, dog's hearing. It's called a BEAR -B -E test, uh, Brain Evocative uh, uh, Audio Response. They put electrodes on your dog's neck, then they give them an, uh, an, a sort of an audiogram test like they would give you, an audio uh, audiologist would. And uh, from the activity on the brain stem, they can tell what the dog can hear or not hear, okay? We have not used that since we started this project uh, more than two years ago. Uh, we've been using dog whistles, and so far it's worked. Um, if you just follow the, the directions that come with this whistle, um, you, you're pretty much going to be in the ballpark, but I'm going to go through it, okay? So here's the package you look for. Remington, silent whistle, professional. Up in the corner here it says uh, R as in Rudolph, 1574. And take this out. This is a really common design of whistle. Mostly they're a body and a piston. This one has a little cover on it you can snap off. We can take the cover off so, uh, so you can use it. I've got the, the part you blow is facing this way. You can, maybe you can see the little notch there uh, like most whistles have. And it's got this other little piece that's a piston, basically. I'm going to take it all the way out. And this screws in and out, and it has a little tiny locking ring that you can lock against the whistle body to fix it at a particular frequency. I'm going to show you basically how this sounds in the audible range. Now there I'm screwing the piston out. Now I'm going to screw the piston in a ways and keep going here. Suddenly it disappears from most people's hearing. And I give it another turn or two and then I'll set the locking ring. Now, Okay, it's going to make a sound a dog can hear, but people can't. All people can hear is a little bit of a hiss, going to hear the air rushing. I am also going to show you one thing that they don't tell you on the packages, and that's how to blow a dog whistle. Um, you don't just blow it, all right? Uh, the frequency will change depending on how much air you're moving through it, not just the piston here. So I'm going to put it down the audible range so you can hear how it blows. Actually, you give it a little bit of a warble. Okay, let's go down. Okay, you blow, blow, stop, blow, stop, like this, like. It's, I know it's quite irritating. Um, that sweeps the frequency, and that helps to ensure that it will hit sort of a sweet spot with your dog. So I'm going to turn the frequency. I'm going to turn this thing back up. What you would do now at this point. So before you just randomly blow it like that, you want your dog, um, uh, there's two good ways to test. One is in a quiet room, quiet house, and uh, uh, with uh, maybe some people talking or a TV down low. So there's a little background noise, but it's not really noisy. Make sure your dog is facing away from you and give it that kind of blow, that pulsating blow. And if the dog whips around and looks at you, his high frequency hearing is just fine. I mean, that's what we have found. Uh, if he doesn't, uh, then there's another way to test, and that is if you have an enclosed area, somewhere you can let the dog run around, let him get distracted running or playing, and again, blow it like that. And if he, again, gives you attention or runs right back to you, which is, by the way, what these things were designed for, um, uh, then you know his hearing is good. If he doesn't, it may be that his high frequency hearing is bad. Typically the pattern with most dogs is if they can hear you when you talk to them, 
and they can understand a verbal command. I'm pure, purely verbal. Don't use a hand signal. And they can understand what you're saying. Usually their high frequency hearing is also good. If they can't hear you, but let's say they can hear somebody driving up the driveway or at the door. Uh, shoes on concrete, um, tires on gravel or concrete blacktop generate a lot of ultrasound. So a dog with poor low frequency hearing that can't hear you talk can probably still hear uh, hear that uh, those kind of sounds if their high frequency hearing is good. If the high frequency hearing is good, it's worth trying a blind sight unit. If it's not, if there's no sign that your dog has high frequency hearing, don't waste your time. Okay. Uh, now, if you try it and you think you got it and it doesn't work, uh, it's really simple. Uh, you buy a blind sight unit, you have 30 days with it. Um, if, if after 30 days you're not seeing results you want, you send it back to us. We give you a full refund minus $25 for, uh, for uh, shipping um, and handling. And that's, that's it. That's no other separate restocking fee. We're just covering some of our costs. Um, but I'd urge you not to even try it if the dog shows no signs of having good high frequency hearing. Uh, what we're, we're really doing here with, blind, with a blind sight unit, whether it's a blind sight or blind sight S, is we're providing a substitute for sight, another way to, to image using sound. So if they can't do it with sound, just hanging the unit around their neck, which I know some people just hope, well, we'll try it and then maybe see if it works. It, it's, a, it's a waste of time. If the dog has good high-frequency hearing, he can probably use use it. The other uh, caveat is mental problems. If a dog is terribly senile, by the way, I've seen a senile dog uses this unit. But if a dog is terribly senile or has other severe mental problems, now I'm not talking about, when I say a severe mental problem, I mean a severe mental problem. If, for instance, the dog is blinded by something like SARDS and then a week later starts chewing on furniture, that's... Believe it or not, that's normal. That's not a serious mental problem. We're not concerned about that. You think about it a little bit. If you woke up one day and you couldn't see, you know, you might think that, that it's, it actually is dark where you are. So when a dog is suddenly blinded, sometimes they, they'll try to, they're, they're going to try to dig their way out of where it's dark, which is impossible because the dark is, you know, inside their head. Uh, but those kind of minor behaviors are not a problem. Major, major behaviors, bizarre behaviors, or dogs that have been blind, because they've been blind, they've been kept in a crate near 24 hours a day for most of their lives and their older dogs. Frequently, they cannot adapt to using the blind sight unit. But anyway, if you get yourself a, one of these Remington dog whistles or any other high quality whistle, don't go to a place like PetSmart and Petco and buy a $3 whistle. Okay, um, of course, a lot of them won't get up in the ultrasonic range. They basically, you turn them up as high as they go and they, you can still hear them. Uh, you need one that gets in the ultrasonic range. So get the Remington or the, there's uh, some good import whistles. You can tell because they're usually expensive, made in England or Austria. Uh, this, this, I think, tends to be around 10 bucks in that price range most places. Uh, anyway, it's, you know, 8 to 12, whatever, something like that. The expensive British and Austrian ones are more like 20 and $30. I'm not sure there's a big difference among them. I'm sure that the more expensive ones are, are built to a higher standard. This is just aluminum. But uh, if the dog can hear an ultrasonic whistle, blind sight will probably work. Okay? Thank you.